Hey, John here. So along with this video, I am now pushing out all of the files that you see me use here, these PostScript programs, onto a GitHub project. I'll put a link to the uh, GitHub page below in the comments for this video. So let's talk about some transforms, two-dimensional transforms, making things bigger, smaller, rotating them, and scale, uh, scaling translations and things like that. Let's uh, re quick review here from the last video. I've got my inches and millimeter conversion procedures defined up here. I'll be using them down here. We've seen this fiducial before. This is the bullseye target fiducial. This one, the round guy with the crosshairs on it. Same as from like video number six or something. Uh, let's look at this guy here. There's a procedure called draw string. We save the graphics contents context i should say the string here is printed at whatever the current point is in the graphics context at the time drawstring is called and the graphics context are restored so all this thing does is it draws that text at the current location so spoiler that's what all these guys are being printed on this page here is using this procedure here i define something called font height which i then use down here to scale my font at f nine millimeters. Let's look at some code here. So what's going on? What we're looking at in particular is scaling right now. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna create a path. I am going to put an X and Y coordinate on the stack in inches and make a copy of it one of the x and y coordinate pairs are going to be used to draw a fiducial then i'm going to move to that location and draw a string so that's what this is all right so i'm like you know what am i a half inch in and five and a half inches up this page that blue guy right there is the fiducial that this guy here draws i move to the same location and i use the draw string procedure to put the text that you see written right there okay with this printed right there i then say relative to the current position to the current point right because drawstring saved and restored the context you saw up here save restore so everything this thing does has no side effects in the graphics context so the position is the same right so, which means i'm still sitting here at where this fiducial was drawn so if I go relative to there, I say go uh, 0 and X and go uh, increase the Y by the font height that I defined above. Go up there and draw another string. So that's why this string up here is drawn, this one above it, right? Then what do I do? I go up, uh, do the same thing, and this time I say 1 half and scale. So what I'm doing is I'm saying this is the X scale and the Y scale. I push an X and a Y scale value onto the stack. I say scale, and from now on, the graphics context is what this thing applies to. Everything will be scaled by a 1 half in the Y dimension. So when I call draw string again, which is this one, is why the X dimension is the same, but it's squished vertically in the Y. Okay? I can do the same thing the other way around. So go up by font height, and remember, I scaled everything by half in Y. So even this R move to, I mean, everything is now scaled by one half in the vertical dimension, which is why the baseline of this line of text here and this one differ half as much as they did down here okay after i have moved up to here i scale the x by half and leave the y alone so this scale operation here applies to the already scaled graphics context up here all right so now both x and y will have been scaled by one half and i draw another screen that's why this one up here looks normal and is half the width of the one down here you know the first five digits zero through four are the same width as all 10 are after the thing's been cut in half i then apparently cut it in half again right so what do I do? I go up by one font height. Again, this is still scaled by one half in Y. So when I go up a font height here and I hit this where there's a fiducial right there, 
And once I am there, then I scale by a half on top of the half that already was. So now I'm at one quarter total, right? I then put the current point on the stack. I don't know if I mentioned this before. Anytime I want to, I can just use the current point operator and it will put the current point into the stack. So up here the stack was empty after the scale operator. Current point puts the current X and Y value in there. I can then call fiducial because remember fiducial wants to consume an X and Y coordinate to know where to draw itself. And that's the fiducial you see here, this little guy there. And of course, remember I've scaled the graphics content. So even the, the fiducial scale down. I mean, everything scales, right? I then draw the string here and it's at one quarter size. I then do what? I go up one inch in the Y and I draw another fiducial there. That's this one right there. Okay. Uh, this is more of a half inch at this point because it's been scaled by a half, right? I then go up another inch, which is scaled down. So it goes up another half inch. That's what's going on here. And then I'm going to execute a loop here. I'm going to do a repeat loop. Four times I'm going to say what? Put the current point on the stack and put a fiducial right there. Well, that would explain why there's a fiducial right here. Okay. Then I'm going to draw the string. I'm then going to move up by the font height. This is the same operation as we saw before. But this time I'm going to increase the scale. I'm going to embiggenate the thing, right? So this is a quarter of the original size. I'm going to scale it up by two. So this one here should be half the size of the original, which you can see down here. It matches this one down here. And I'm going to go around this loop four times. So here's the first time it's the same size. Second time it will have doubled the scale and rendered it again. Third time it should be the same size as the original text. It looks good. Fourth time through it should be double the size of the original text. And again, all 10 digits here are the size of half the digits after it's been scaled up. Four times through this loop. All right, so that's how scaling works. So let's talk now about translations and rotations. All right, so what's going on here, right? Well, let's first see what we're going to end up with over here. We got a bunch of boxes with letters in them and some with numbers that curl around like that, okay? Okay. Here's our millimeter conversion routine. We're going to create a box dimension that we're going to use to specify the size of a, these square boxes. 30 millimeters is how big these each one of these things are. Um, and then I'm going to draw up a, a, write a procedure to draw a box. What do I do? I put a string on the stack and then I call draw box. And when this is done, nothing is on the stack. And the box, according to my doc, will be drawn with the lower left corner at the coordinate zero, zero. Okay. And you can see down here that a box is probably written, uh, drawn at zero, zero, and it has an A on it. Okay. So what am I doing here? I'm, I'm saving the context and restoring it at the very end. And you'll see the reason I do this is because I want to keep the position. After I've drawn a box, I want to still have this, the current point set to the same position it was at before I drew the box, okay? And you'll see something creative in here. Notice I save the context here and then I save it again. The context, the graphics context has its own stack, as I mentioned earlier, that's independent of the upper end stack. So I can keep saving multiple ones, all right? I restore this one. This one restores the context here. This one down here will restore the one on the outside, okay? Just to see where we're going here. So what's going on here? When I do a G save, there's a string on the stack. It doesn't consume it, and it stays there. Uh, none of these things will consume the string. What's going on here? I create a path. I go to zero, zero. I draw a square box over to the, you know, down into the right in X. Then I move up in Y. I then move left in X, negative box dimension. Okay. Would move me to the left in X and leave me. That's the top of the box. I close the paths and then I G save here because what I want to do, I want to draw 
the box, and then I want to fill it. Okay, I want it filled, and I want a hairline line around the outside. So I'm going to save the path by doing gsave. I'm going to do a fill. It will have consumed that path. I then do a restore and get the path back from here. I then say one millimeter line width black, and I draw a black line around the box using the same path I used to draw the red inside here. Okay. Then I do what? Move to one millimeter, one millimeter. I set the font using the box dimension as a hint as to how big the font should be. It's 60% of the box dimension. And I then call show right here and display the string that was put on the stack before this procedure was invoked. I then do a restore, which gives me back the graphics context prior to moving it all over the place with these paths up here. All right. So what are we going to do with this thing? We're going to say what? It makes sense that there would be a, somebody had to set the color red somewhere. And then I'm going to put an A string on the, on the stack, and I'm going to draw a red box with an A in it. That's the one down here. Makes perfect sense. So here's our translate. I'm going to go box dim and X, box dim and Y, and I'm going to call translate, and then I'm going to put a box with a B in it there. All right? Remember, every time I draw a box, the current point that is the context of the program running here before it invokes the procedure is actually ignored in this procedure, right? Because I have an absolute position moved to zero, zero right here in this procedure, okay? So what happens is that zero, zero that is used by the draw box is uh, the zero, zero after this translation has taken place. So what happens is the B ends up over here. So let's think about this for a second. What does that really mean? When I say box dim, box dim, that's the X and the Y translation. And then I draw a box at zero, zero. Well, what happens is, and when you say translate, it says from now on, take your current X and Y notion and every time anyone says, go here, there, or whatever you're going to do, whenever there's a point, a position, just add the translated coordinates to that position. So when I draw a box at 0, 0, it ends up at 0 plus box dim and 0 plus box dim in, in both X and Y. And that's why when you draw a box at 0, 0, after you said translate, it ends up over here. Okay? Then what do I do? I say go uh, 100 millimeters in X and up one box dimension in Y and do another translate and put a C over there. All right, so that's this red one over here with a C you can kind of see peeking out. So that must be 100 millimeters over from here and up one box dimension from here. Now this crooked one, let's see what's going on here. We change the color to green, so that explains why D is green. And now we do a rotate, 45 degrees counterclockwise, all right? And I say rotate, that rotates the coordinate system. So now when I say put a, a box at 0, 0, and put a D in it, we're still, it, it applies the translation and the rotation. So we're 45 degrees twisted around counterclockwise that's why this guy's tipped up like that and why it's in this location even though it's still the procedure said draw it at zero zero then what do i do i come down here and i do the same thing i go back to red and i put an e and this is the same thing box dim box dim translate so i'm going to go to the upper right corner of the current box the last box that i just drew become red and put a box with an e on it well that's the up now that you're viewing it you know with your head tipped to the side this is you know over to the right you know and up on the top so that's why this upper right from the rotated perspective is over here and then i draw the b up there right i then do the same thing again i translate up to the upper right of e and then after i get there i rotate it another 20 degrees counterclockwise and i apply a 75 percent scale and draw 
a box with an F in it. So now you can see this one's twisted a little bit. It's not just over and up and draw like the E. It goes over and up and twist and scale <laughs> right, to draw this F. So all these things combined, and they compound, right? Because I'm still drawing this box as far as that procedure can, is concerned. It's the same size, and it's always at zero, zero. All right, so the translations, rotations, these all apply to the graphics context through which all subsequent drawing commands will be interpreted. So that's Mr. F over here, right? Okay, now what do I got? I got a loop. I got a for loop. He's going to go from 1 to 20, and he's going to count by 1. So what is he going to do? He's doing the same thing we've been doing before. Go to the upper right corner of the last box that was drawn. Rotate 20 degrees. Scale down, you know, to 75% of the last size. Put the, uh, what am I doing? I, I, I talked about this in a previous video. You take the loop iterate the 1 through 20, and I'm going to turn it into a string so that when drawbox is invoked, there's a string whose value is the number from the loop iterate in that box. All right? That's why these boxes all have numbers in them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So as I go around and execute this loop, every single time I'm going to draw a box that's been scaled down and rotated on the upper right of the previous box. So every single one of these boxes is written with the same exact code, then the same exact procedure, and every one of them is at zero, zero, and every single one of them is the same size as far as the logic goes up here in Drawbox that actually does it. It thinks every one of them is at zero, zero, and each one of them is box dim by box dim units in size, so 30 millimeters, right? And you don't see me changing the box dim value. I'm not redefining that variable to change the size of the box. I'm using the scale operator to do that. All right, so what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and feel free to go and grab all the code on my GitHub uh, site. I'll put a link in the comments. Thanks for watching, bye.